Hello my soccer universe, let's wrap this international week up, although I will probably treat you to one more national team related jersey video since I have the national team jerseys here uh, next to me on the rack here and back there before we go back into the club season. I want to actually review a little bit and look a little bit at winners and losers during the international break. Interestingly, only 14 teams have actually boosted their chances of qualifying, 13 of which are hanging back there. Uh, only Croatia, I didn't have a spot for them and then I said, yeah, I have Italy here. I want to wear Italy because it, Italy to me is definitely one of the bigger surprises and one of the most consistent performers. Consistent, not great. Consistent performance, performance during that break. Um, before we go uh, group by group and see, I, I want to give you the expected standings. So uh, what my model says is the average outcome of each group. Then we look at chance of qualifying. We also look a little bit of how these chances have changed uh, from prior to this international break to where we are currently stand. Although I don't have a new FIFA rating yet. I think it will come out probably on Friday, which probably will change things up a little bit. But I don't think there will be huge changes coming in any case so yeah i before we go in i think the biggest challenge for all national team coaches was how to manage three games within uh seven days or eight days for all of them so if you start on tuesday you ended on tuesday if you start on wednesday you ended on wednesday um and to me the way they managed it and i said it uh i hinted at it i, I didn't really spell, spell it out in the review video for match day three when I think about it, uh, managers that rotated or, or allowed themselves to rotate because you're not playing, especially I'm talking now about the teams that have hopes for qualifying, so finishing in top two. So uh, in the first five uh, groups, we have not every team played all three uh, match days. So for those who played two, it was relatively straightforward, played a full team. For those who played three match days, um, I think rotation was the key. And... It is especially, I mean, I can say, for instance, Italy and Belgium. Belgium played the full squad uh, for the most important games. Italy played, uh, rotated around significantly enough that they uh, could manage to get their point. Um, but then I look like a team uh, like Austria and Denmark, who were in a very similar situation. You had a tricky tie to open up on the road. Uh, Austria and Scotland, uh, Denmark and Israel. Uh, which they managed uh, both more, yeah, Austria didn't manage it super, so, 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 so well, but that's down to, but you know, if uh, with proper coaching, Austria probably would have won against Scotland that way, that way, Israel the same thing. Then Denmark allowed themselves to flip the lineup, play uh, the B team against Moldova and completely romped over them. Not only that, uh, it lifted the spirit in the squad, Denmark also um, could rest their key players. And then I think except for the goalkeeper, all the other players that were absolutely changed then for the Austria game. Whereas Austria made minor changes, but still played a good squad and did not play well against the Ferry Allies. I mean, got the win. However, you could see in the third game, especially when it came into the second, the second half, not only did the coach say we want to continue playing like we did play in the first half, whereas the Danish coach uh, more or less uh, said, yeah, we were really slow, we needed to uh, speed it up. Not all of that, you could you see that the players were gassed in a way. I think similar thing happened also to Germany in a way that uh, they overplayed their players. Uh, for Spain, I you know I I don't want to analyze the lineups because I actually <laughs> have 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 look, look into it. But in the middle, when they had this, uh, the, it did not start well. And I mean, it was not very convincing. But especially the Georgia game, uh, they needed a little bit of a spark there. Um, other teams, I think France also switched around a few times, but. Uh, they limit them, uh, themselves to let's not go all out. Belgium similarly, I mean, uh, they knew the Czechs are probably the strongest opponent there. We just beat Wales. Let's get a draw out of uh, the Czech Republic. And I think we're still looking rather, rather good. So uh, those are just a few examples how you could manage this break. And I think this was the biggest, biggest challenge that could tell, that could tell you a whole, um, you could tell how uh, teams that could rotate 
especially because they played against less opponents, that they actually got more out of that, uh, especially if you rotate like full squads and give themselves a break. Uh, it was not necessary to in a season where anyway everyone has already played so many, so many games to really challenge uh, an entire squad. So with that little prelude, let's uh, look at expected standings and a little bit of history. We'll start, we go of course alphabetically through the groups. We'll start with Group A, where at the moment Portugal is expected to finish top uh, on average a bit uh, less than two points ahead of Serbia, who is clearly the second best team. Uh, Luxembourg, Ireland and Azerbaijan are only outside chances, uh, especially Ireland, and you can see it already on the graph to the right side. On the, on the right side, you, you can see Ireland was the clear number three team in, in its group after the loss to Luxembourg. I mean, it went already uh, uh, significantly down on the first when they lost to, Ser to Serbia and even then Lu Luxembourg completely robbed them of any chances. Uh, whereas Serbia and uh, poor Portugal were overall steadily increasing. And I have to add when I said only 13 teams, uh, 13 teams 14 teams of which I have jerseys actually had a positive. There were, I think, three or four uh, where I don't have jerseys. It also increased the chances. So a uh, little caveat there. But yeah, Portugal um, took a dip with the draw at Serbia, which didn't affect Serbia as much, but then uh, both uh, lift, lift themselves up again. It's really poor Portugal who are the favorites in there. Uh, you can also see how Spain and Sweden, I mean that that group got a whole lot tighter, a little bit uh, affected by the fact that Sweden did not play the third match matches, so they kind of stayed level, even dipped a little bit. But there you can see that the draw uh, against Greece cost Spain and uh, allowed Sweden to close the gap. Then uh, Sweden got another win. Spain pulled out the other win, I think, with the draw. Sweden would have gone ahead of Spain, but then Spain gets the one win. Uh, you also can, can see how costly, I mean, Greece's chances increased slightly with that point in Spain, but how costly actually that draw against Georgia was. Uh, and this is, we see for Ukraine as well, if you get a big uh, result first, you need to fall for it up. And it's in Greece's case, they did not play match day two, so they would have had a chance actually put in a good performance but it was not meant to be in Georgia probably wanted to pile on their really good result. Uh, uh, no, not result, but showing against Spain. Look at what Italy is doing. Continuously rising to about just below 70%, way, way going all the way up to 80, 80%, bit by bit by bit. It was not exciting what Italy showed most, most of the time, but they got the job done and had a few sparks of, of genius. I think the way they started the first half against Northern Ireland was good. Um, the and against Bulgaria, then also showed a little bit. And with a little bit more finishing from Immobile, they could have um, gotten more out of the Lithuania game as well. Um, Switzerland started out uh, well, but you know, you can see that the one win that they got against Lithuania didn't really lift themselves that much and then they didn't play. So they peter out a little bit while Italy can pull, pull away. The other three are non fact because it's between Italy and Switzerland. And we will see that in most groups, we already know the top two teams um, there are not many that are uh, that level. France, clear favorites. And I said it in the review video, they're the only team that have wins in this. And they have two of these. And you see already that it's all, uh, more than six points on average that they, will, they are expected to finish ahead of Ukraine. That's very, very dominant. We can say this already after three games that France is probably through. They had the rough start against Ukraine where they only got the draw uh, with a very uh, bad first half. And you can see uh, how Ukraine's chances of qualifying suddenly got uh, significantly higher and France took, took the, about the same amount uh, dipping and then Ukraine uh, coughs it up twice. Uh, you cannot say it any different. Ukraine really messed up. And, um, uh, and where, where France gets two wins and is clearly sailing. Finland and um, Bosnia are just hanging in there, but I think very minute chances. Similar story uh, for, Bel for Belgium, who are really uh, the clear favorite. It is a race for the second spot with Wales having at the moment a slight advantage because they have the win over the Czechs, as lucky as that win was. Um, it has, has to be said, 
but uh, the uh, whales have uh, the upper hand in that one for the moment. Um, you can definitely see uh, how with that win, Wales could separate themselves from the Czech Republic. So the Czech Republic has to play catch up. Um, whereas Belgium, yeah, the draw didn't hurt a little bit, but you know, you also steadily increase the chances from 80 to almost uh, 90 percent. So uh, Belgium overall doing well too. And now the Denmark and Austria example. Um, the draw against Scotland for Austria was already disappointing, and you get the win, who kind of pulled you back to a little bit the position that you were before. Um, with Denmark still holding a big advantage and then the big loss to Denmark really cost us Austria. Scotland also could only pick themselves a little a little bit up and the others are just uh, there to make up the, num the numbers more, more or less. But this group is very much in Denmark's favor and Denmark is probably one of the first qualifiers for uh, this neck for the World Cup and uh, it's between Austria and Scotland at the moment Austria is still giving the advantage due to rating. I actually am not so confident there. We have now two more two groups that are a whole lot, a lot more open. I mean, um, Turkey, we have them here now them for they really boosted their chances with two huge wins to start the campaign. However, that draw against Latvia was a major downer since the Dutch picked up two more points. That actually allows the Dutch now with not only uh, to, you know, you still match them, but with a win over Turkey, you're not drawing level on points and you have, have to look out for goal difference. You actually can move clear ahead if everyone would win out otherwise. So uh, that was a huge boost for the Dutch uh, who actually would be favored at home against Turkey. However, we never know how, how they will show up. Uh, Norway, yeah, that loss against Turkey cost them dearly. Uh, yeah, the other two wins against the lower uh, te teams in this uh, group maybe prop them up a little bit but Norway I think will probably have a little say in who will go to the World Cup without them them actually going there then the, I think this is the craziest group because there are still four teams that have nah, three teams Honestly, it's only two, but you know, it looks kind of the, that. I mean, it's Croatia, Russia. Those are the two clear. And Russia, that lost to Slovakia, just propped up the Slovaks that I'm thinking maybe they have a chance. I don't think they really have. Uh, Slovenia really put themselves with the win over Croatia in a good position, actually dragged uh, Croatia down. You, you see how close it was after match day one. And then everything split up because Slovenia couldn't fall for it up with win. First they lose to Russia, that's okay. But then lose losing to Cyprus robbed them of any chances. And um, as I said, Russia losing actually put Croatia in a really, really good position overall. And, and in the end, the Croatian week started up badly, but they are a little bit better off than they were uh, before this break. England, like Italy, picking up the wins, not always pretty, but they pick them up. That's the most important thing. Uh, you don't need to uh, be very exciting, especially with such a tight schedule. It is a race for the second spot. The loss of Poland to England, of course, put Hungary a little bit in the front seat, especially also with the draw in, in there. But I still would overall, now my gut, Gottfried, the model says Hungary at the moment, my gut, Gottfried, is that Poland will probably catch Hungary. And then uh, we have the German group which I think is the most interesting world because you see Germany was on a similar trajectory as um, Italy and England and then they lose to North Macedonia, which puts everything in doubt. First of all, uh, look at how tight it is behind Germany. Germany will win this group ra rather easily, but then for second spot, arguably everyone but Liechtenstein has still a shot at. And that's rather exciting. Romania, good start uh, with a win against North Macedonia two losses. North Macedonia propped themselves up again and especially the win over Germany really really boosted them uh, there so uh, that was a big win for them. Uh, we also have Armenia in there who are now second favorites. That is exciting. I have, I have to say Iceland probably a little bit out of, uh, out, out of it. And then uh, with all that we have the expected uh, playoff teams at that moment. So those are all sec second place teams with the seeded nations will be Switzerland, Sweden, Serbia, Russia, Netherlands and Wales. 
unceded Hungary, Austria, Armenia, Ukraine and the Czech Republic and Slovenia would make up the numbers from the Nations League. So um, that's also quite interesting. Um, the way it is done, the first six teams are assigned teams from 7 to 12 and then uh, they are drawn together into three playoff paths without the seeding then having any uh, mention as far as I understand it will be a random draw so Switzerland uh, could then play Sweden in the final even uh, that's as far as I, I understand I actually would think it would be more interesting if Switzerland against Wales, Sweden against the Netherlands, Serbia against Russia I think and then uh, whoever got drawn there would make it maybe a little bit more um, interesting also the teams the city teams have a home game so it actually matters and if you uh, qualify via the nations league you have an away game for sure then home home for the advantage will be able to decide who goes first out of the pot so yeah uh we'll talk next time european qualifiers in september maybe i'll do a little preview video video there too uh let me know how you agree or disagree with uh, what I've been showing you here with the expected standings that my model spit out. Again, they're based on the ELO and the FIFA rate, ratings uh, uh, combined and then a little bit uh, mathematically modeling. But uh, it's a fun exercise to do to actually see and you get, a, get an idea how good and bad certain results were. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you liked this video, subscribe to my channel and see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!